Qualunque cosa farai, amala. Come amavi la cabina del paradiso. Quel neri piccinetto. What makes movies special? It's been about 146 years since the first movie was made. In the years, there have been millions of movies made from different people in different parts of the world. I think, in a way, movies are special to all of us. But what makes them special? Iconic characters? Gut-busting jokes? Thrilling action? Compelling sagas? What is it about movies specifically that brings special meaning to our lives? In 2020, the world was disturbed by a virus and most people were required to stay in quarantine for an extended period of time. I, along with my family, spent most of my time watching movies. This would of course end up inspiring my four-part series, The Ultimate Quarantine Film Ranking. While I watched a ton of movies over this period and found most of it fun, I felt something was missing. I missed going to the movie theater, seeing the stories on the big screen and being immersed in them in the way only a communal large theater could. Many people don't care for the theater now and believe, why would you go there when you can just watch stuff at home? While I agree that yes, it is convenient to watch things at home, there's just something special and magical about the theater experience. In my eyes, no movie celebrates its belief better than Cinema Paradiso, aka the Wavo Cinema Paradiso in the original Italian. Cinema Paradiso is a 1988 French-Italian made coming-of-age film written and directed by Giuseppe Tornatore. The film stars Philippe Noret, Jacques Perrin, and Salvatore Cassio, and more. You may remember me mentioning this movie in my Ultimate Quarantine film ranking, as I ranked it as number two on my list. Well, ever since I saw the movie four years ago, it's continued to be special to me. Today, I'd like to take a quick moment of your time and talk about why this movie is so special to me, and furthermore, why movies in general can be so special to people like me and you. So, grab your popcorn and your lightsabers, let's get into this. The movie begins just as a man named Salvatore, aka Toto De Vita, learns that an old friend of his named Alfredo has died. Already in the scene, you'll witness the skilled facial acting by Jacques Perrin, who plays Salvatore. You can really see all the thoughts racing inside the character's head. As the movie unfolds, we see that Toto is played by three actors, Salvatore Casillo as a child, Marco Leonardi as a teen, and Perrin as an adult. Casillo, the child, did such a good job in this movie. He was such a cute kid. His childlike wonder seeps into the whole movie, which makes his relationship with Alfredo all the better. Speaking of Alfredo, he's the person who runs the only movie theater in a small Sicilian village in the years after World War II. At the central focus of the movie is the relationship between Alfredo and the young boy, Toto, who inches himself into Alfredo's life. At first, Alfredo sees Toto as nothing more than a pest who just keeps bothering him. But soon, their relationship starts to grow. It's also a nice touch that even though Toto annoys him, Alfredo still cares for him and defends him. There's a really cute scene between the two of them, where Alfredo is showing him how to work the projector and even giving him a little history lesson on how to do it. It also includes one of my favorite quotes from the whole film. Poi, quando sente da qua sopra che il cinema è pieno, la gente ride e si diverte, allora sei contento pure tu. Ti fa piacere che gli altri ridono. È proprio come se fosse tu a farle ridere. I really appreciate Toto too. You know how there are some characters where people go, OMG, it's literally me! Well, Toto is that character for me. I felt connected to him, as I too have grown up with such an appreciation for movies and the art of them. Also, the scene where he tries to talk to his crush, but then just blanks out and says, Nice day, isn't it? as it's raining is just too relatable. Talking is hard, man. I also really appreciate the brief evidence of war that the writers included. It furthers Alfredo's message to Toto that life isn't like the movies. Life is much harder. And now... Oh, what's this? Why, I do believe it's time for... Some of you may be asking, Spooter, where can I find this movie? Well, if you're here in the United States, I got some things to say. First off, there's two versions of the movie, the theatrical cut and the director's cut. 
The director's cut is technically the original version of the film, but it had a lot of filler that got cut out in the theatrical release. It was late when I watched this, and I was not in the mood to watch a 3 hour movie, so I needed to find a theatrical cut. Problem is, most services I subscribe to only had the director's cut. To further complicate things, I also wanted to find one that had the original Italian language and had English subtitles too, as I do not know Italian. I plumbed the depths and eventually, I was able to find the version I was looking for. I forget where exactly, but hey, at least I found it. It just sucks that it was so hard to find. Like, this is one of the best movies of all time, and it's so inaccessible. Well, back to the review. If I were to give you the premise of Cinema Paradiso, you could be forgiven for presuming it was merely a circle jerk. You know, a movie that just talks about, wow, look how great movies are. Look, we got Star Wars and Marvel and oh my god, Harry Potter. Wow, don't you just want to watch these movies? Don't you want to watch Indiana Jones? Don't you want to watch Frozen? Don't you want to watch the Velocipaster? What? You get what I mean. Cinema Paradiso is a movie about loving movies, but it's not, look how great movies are, it's, Look how movies can impact or speak to us. Throughout the film, no character ever talks about the movies that they watch. Heck, I don't think I remember any of them even mentioning their names. Because that's not what's important. These movies are just that. Movies. What makes the movie special, however, is how they impact our main character, Toto. For example, we see a scene in Cinema Paradiso where Alfredo is forced by a local priest to splice out the kissing scenes on many of the film reels at the theater. Before they are spliced, Toto watches the scenes of people kissing with a gleeful smile on his face. One may assume this is because he's just a little stinker who thinks it's funny. However, later in the movie, we find out that his father went to war and has been missing for some time. It makes me wonder, does he like these kissing scenes because he sees his parents in them? Does he like movies because they give him an escape from his life in a small town? We also see that movies are not only important to Toto, but the entire town that he lives in, Giancaldo. The theater is a place of connection and community for the people. They go to the theater to laugh, to cry, and to come together. Cinema Paradiso is not about how great movies are, it's about how movies can impact us. Naturally, I think there's no other scene in the movie that proves this more than its ending, which I consider to be the greatest ending in all movie history. If you haven't seen the movie before, I ask that you please skip to this timestamp here, as I would not want to give away this wonderful ending to you. So, on the count of three, if you haven't seen the movie, you're gonna skip, okay? Three, two, one. Pizza time. As I mentioned previously, when you reach the end of the movie, Toto, now a grown Salvatore, learns that his friend Alfredo has passed away. This encourages him to return back to John Caldo, even though many years before he promised Alfredo that he would never come back. As he returns, he notices that the town he lived in has changed. He learns that the cinema he grew up in is being shut down. Salvatore walks through the ruins of the old Silver Screen Playhouse. He sees how much things have changed. It's been 30 years. How could things not change? But... There's still a sense of familiarity. Earlier in the movie, we see this weird guy who keeps yelling in the street that he owns it. At the start, He's just a silly character that either amuses or annoys the local townsfolk, depending on the situation. Now, he's a piece of the past that still remains. A way to tell Salvatore that yes, while things have changed, there will always be something to remind him. Alfredo's wife gives Salvatore a present from Alfredo, a film reel. As Alfredo returns home from his hometown, he decides to watch the reel. And this is when I broke down crying.
We see on the film, it's full of kissing. The same kissing scenes that Alfredo was forced to cut out. The same kissing scenes that little Toto found himself so fascinated by. If you watch this out of context, it just looks like a man crying at people kissing. But with context, it hits all the harder. This is why Cinema Paradiso works. This is why movies are so special. When I think about movies, I think about my dad taking me to go see my first movie in the theater, Fantastic Mr. Fox. I think about taking my little brother to go see Oppenheimer. I think about seeing Godzilla Minus One with my mom and seeing her tear up at the end. I think about laughing hysterically at Ted with my other little brother. I think about having sleepovers with my grandparents and watching Forrest Gump with them. I think about watching Ghibli movies with one of my best friends. I think about watching the Barbie movie with another best friend, both of us dudes wearing pink. This is why movies are so special to me. Cinema Paradiso is not a love letter to movies. It's a love letter to our love of movies. We love movies because they bring us closer together. They inspire us. They give us memories. I hope that when I start making movies, I'll be able to do what Cinema Paradiso did for me. In a way, I feel I am truly like Salvatore De Vita. I hope that just like him, I can share the magic of movies with others, just like how movies spoke to me as a child. That's why, in my eyes, Cinema Paradiso is cinema. Stay spectacular, everyone. Seriously, please don't remake this Hollywood, I'm begging you.